Okay, we're on the home stretch now. So we are going to now be given the formula of something. And we are going to come up with the name. The only thing we have left to do here is transition metals, right? So we're going to be given the formula including a transition metal. And we're going to have to come up with a name including the transition metal. If you remember back to the last video, when names of transition metals are given, something must be given with them, right? If the name of a transition metal is given, lots of exclamation points here, we must include a Roman numeral. We had them in the last slide, right? And now we have to generate that Roman numeral. That's the trick when we're dealing with writing the name of a transition metal. So let's give it a go. I'm going to give you a formula. Let's say I um, give you Fe. Uh, let's do Fe2 O3. Okay? Now, if this were just a normal binary compound with a main group metal, all we did was we gave the metal its name, right? He got his full name, and we did some spelling changes on the non-metal, right? Some spelling changes back here. We did that in one of the first videos. Spelling changes include, right? Drop the ending and add IDE. So, if we were to follow those simple rules, this guy's name wouldn't be that hard. We would say he's iron oxide, right? I dropped, I kept the first syllable, I dropped everything else, I added IDE. I left a big blank because I just made a whole fit down here about how we need a Roman numeral. We need to tell the world what kind of iron we have. We need to put in our Roman numeral. We have to go figure out what kind of iron this is. It is not iron 2 because there is two of them. This tells us how many there are, not what kind it is, right? If we think back and do a little analysis, where did that 2 come from? How do we get the subscripts in our formula? We get them because we crisscross, right? So this 2 came from that oxygen, right? That's how he got there. He came from the two. When we build these formulas, we always put the charge up here and then we bring the charge over and we can take it right back. And that's what we're going to do here. So that two had to come from the oxygen, right? Because we know that the charge on oxygen, if I went and checked, the charge on oxygen is a negative two. So that's where that two came from. Okay. So following that rationale, where did this three come from? Right? I got to cross that back over. He came from the iron. So this is iron, three, oxide. Uh, number one mistake students make is they just forget to include a Roman numeral. Second mistake, if they remember to include a Roman numeral, they choose his subscript. That's not right. We have to undo all of the crisscrossing to get them back to their original states so I can really see who iron is, not how many there are. So this is iron, three, oxide. Let's try one more. Okay, so let's look at an example. Um, let's say that we are going to have um, let's say we have that. Okay, so we have uh, some copper and we have some sulfide. We know that this is going to be um, binary again. Uh, and so we know that we're going to do some spelling changes. We know this is copper. So right away we could just call this copper sulfide spelling change because it's binary. But I have to show the Roman numeral. So, where did this 2 come from? It, it came from the sulfur 
It told us we needed two copper. It came from the sulfur. There is no number here. So the number we imagine, right, the unspoken number is the number one. So this number one must have come from the copper. So this is copper one sulfide. Um, so let's look at another example. Um, how about this time we look at something like, this. Now, we know it's not binary. I've thrown in here a polyatomic, so we can come up with that guy's name from the list. We can come up with this guy's name from the periodic table, so right away we can get pretty close to the right name. We can get in the neighborhood of cobalt. This guy, if we go back to the list, right, we can find he's nitrate, so we could call him copper nitrate. Now, cobalt lives in the transition block, right? If I find cobalt, he's right here. He's not a main group metal. He's hanging out in here, and I know he's going to need a Roman numeral, just like iron, just like copper, right? They're all in this block that we need to offer up a Roman numeral. So we know we need a Roman numeral, but we don't know which one. Uh, there's a little imaginary one here, right? Um, where did this two come from? He came from the neighbor. And this one came from nitrate, right? The charge on nitrate is a negative one. We could go back to the list and look at that. And so we know that the, co the cobalt must be cobalt two. Okay? Um, so that's the general idea of how we're going to go about naming these. Let's do one more um, so I can show you one little nuance, just so we don't get confused. Let's go back and look at something like this. Okay. Again, we can come up with a pretty good name um, pretty quickly. We can say that this is definitely iron. Not hard. We know where he is on the periodic table. He's in the transition block. We can look at this polyatomic formula. We could go to our sheet and we could see that it's sulfate. But if we look up who sulfate is, so sulfate is SO4. It's who he is. He has one sulfur. He has four oxygen. Those are his four oxygen. If I say sulfate, I'm talking about SO4. So when I go over here, if I do this trick where I take a number and I move it back, it has to be the number about how many there are, not who he is. Right, so it's a dist it's a small distinguishing factor. This is part of sulfate's formula. If I draw a box around sulfate's formula, I cannot give away any components. I cannot take that four and chuck it back over there to the iron. Sulfate is SO4. That's not a four that is up for grabs. I cannot give that four away. It would make him cease being sulfate. So that means that there is one sulfate here. Right? And it means there is one iron here. When we do not have any subscripts, we are just left with a one and a one. We cannot use this treatment. We cannot remove these subscripts and take them back from where they came because we don't really have any subscripts. So what we do in this case is we um, acknowledge that it took one iron to electrostatically satisfy one sulfate, right? They're perfect matches. He's a perfect match for sulfate. So we have to go back to the list and figure out the charge on sulfate. Sulfate's a negative two, always, never, never changes. That's his charge. So sulfate is a negative two. So if we know that they're perfect matches for each other, right, and sulfate is a negative two, what must the iron be so that they're electrostatically perfect matches, right? He's got to be a positive two. So this is iron two sulfate. So if we can't go giving away these subscripts, right, if we can't give that away, 
uh, to, to unriddle the, the question at hand, like we could over here for copper sulfate, uh, or sorry, copper sulfide or cobalt nitrate, then we have to start looking at their electrostatic matches when they are in fact perfect for each other. So one iron and one sulfate came together. So this is iron two sulfate. Okay. So you're going to bring all of these skills into class and we're going to do a massive review and work on, um, work on a handout. Okay. So we're going to put all these skills to practice, but you have to have these general rules or you're going to be lost. Uh, and I'm not going to take the time in class to reteach this because you can see how long it took to break down all of these rules. Okay. So, uh, good luck and, uh, keep practicing and I'll see you in